FAX is fluorescence activated cell sorting, which is a name that was generated by a company called Beckton Dickinson, and this is a trade name for them. The real term for FAX is flow cytometry, which covers both the analytical flow cytometry and cell sorting. Basically, the tenant is to get cells to flow singly through a laser beam so that the laser beam can excite the fluorescence molecules on the cell surface so that we can identify the different sorts of cells through monoclonal antibodies and different fluorochromes. First of all, we have to focus the cells into a single line, and that's done through hydrodynamic focusing so that we can get a sheath fluid driving the cells so that the cells are held within a set point, just their own width, so that they can't move around, so that we don't get any variation of signal. So that's the liquid side of the instrument. Then we have the lasers to provide the light sources, which can be specific for the different fluorochromes that we might want to use. And then for we have to have the detectors, for which we use photomultiplier tubes and bandpass filters and dichroic filters to separate the different wavelengths of light out. We're getting data from the instrument, we can display the data on cytograms and histograms. So that's two dimensional plots and single dimensional plots. And so we can use the fluorescence data to help us identify the cells that we're interested in by what's called backgating. So we can put a, a region around a positive fluorochrome and see where that is being displayed on our forward scatter and side scatter to allow us to isolate the cells of interest. We can then use that to create the primary gate to select the cells. We then move from the primary cells to look at the pulse width of the signals to help us identify single cells from doublets. We can then move with those two gates added together to our fluorochrome plots to identify single positives of each color or negative or double positives. So we, we plot on a two-dimensional plot to give us the intensity of one fluorochrome against another fluorochrome. Having said that, cells always express a certain amount of autofluorescence, which is a result of the 488 nanometer laser exciting the flavins within the DNA of the cell. And so we use this to give us a negative signal to compare with the positive signal that we will get from our monoclonal antibody labeled fluorochromes. Facts can be used for identifying different populations so that we can get some population statistics. So if a person has got, say, AIDS, we can say that they've got low levels of CD4 cells and can give us diagnostic from that perspective. It's also used a lot in hematology for looking at lymphomas to identify the different sorts of lymphomas because of the different antigen densities that we find on the different cancerous type cells. We can use it for all sorts of other things like looking at DNA um, cell cycle. We can look at the calcium flux of a cell, so we can trigger a cell and see that flux within a flow cytometer to tell us how active that cell is to a particular stimuli. So within the Dunn School, we have a fairly simple instrument called the Fax Calibre, which uses two lasers and gives us four different independent colors which gives us a fairly basic instrument for looking at fairly simple questions. We have two other analyzers that can use three lasers and look at eight different colors at the same time, giving us a more complex investigation. We also have an instrument called an image stream, which allows us to use both image and flow cytometry. So it allows us to use a combination of both systems. We can still analyze the cells by using flow cytometry type signals that are generated. But we can then look at those cells specifically. So if we have a particular cell, we can identify, isolate it, and just look at those physically on a uh, computer and do image analysis on those. The other instruments we have are for cell sorting, which is the next stage on. So it's exactly the same as a fax analyzer, but instead of just looking at the cells and throwing them away, we can actually isolate them. We do that by shaking the stream of fluid very fast, creating droplets. These droplets can then be separated by uh, potential difference 
to put into different tubes.